Yes. Uh, See, in the morning, uh, I have discussed about uh, the hybrid ARQ uh, feedback procedure for downlink and as well as uplink uh, transmission. Okay. Now, let me discuss about the cell search. Okay. Uh, is it possible to... Uh, sorry. Is it possible to say from your side what are the different types of uh, signals which we use for cell sets? I think uh, this I have discussed uh, during model three. Yes, any anybody, anyone can respond. What are the signals which we use in the LTE for doing this cell uh, cell search procedure? Yes, people should respond. What are the different signals? Are you aware? What are the different signals used in the LTE for doing the cell search operation? Uh, as I said, I discussed uh, already this topic. Okay during module 3 about uh, maybe we almost 2-3 uh, weeks back yes anyone can say what uh, signals are available uh, PSS and SSS uh, very good yeah see primary synchronization signal and uh, sync secondary synchronization signal right i said those two are the uh, synchronization signals used for doing the cell search operation in lde okay so i think others also should respond okay manjanath is responding raghav is responding but others uh, there is no interaction only they should open up their mouth uh, if you involve in class and as well as if you study regularly, you will get interest. Otherwise, difficult. Uh, Eshkana. Eshkana. Hello, Eshkana. At least say hi now. If you can't answer my question, at least you can say hi. No, that also you don't do. But. Yes? Okay, fine. Uh, let me go to that topic only. Mm. So this is a cell search uh, procedure, right? As soon as you switch on your mobile phone, okay, the first thing what it will do is it has to acquire the time and frequency synchronization with the cell uh, with which it is attached. Okay. So, it has to detect the physical layer cell ID also of that uh, cell, right? So, that will be done through the cell search procedure or we say synchronization procedure, okay? <coughs> so, as I said, as soon as you switch on your mobile phone, right? The mobile phone, means uh, we call that as user equipment now, that has to means that will acquire the time and frequency synchronization with a cell uh, with, the, with which it is attached and it also detects the physical layer cell id of that cell okay through a process called cell search procedure or we say synchronization procedure okay so during this uh, cell search procedure the user equipment will identify these things so it will identify the symbol and frame timing it will identify the frequency band okay and it will identify the cell uh, cell identification we say then the transmission bandwidth what is the antenna configuration as i said that there are uh, different antenna ports right antenna port 0 1 2 3 and all and it will determine 
the cyclic frequency length okay so these are the things uh, identified by the user equipment while doing the cell search procedure right so let me say the process what is that cell search process so first step is it will be detecting the symbol timing and the cell id index two things are there okay one is nid of two is n cell id index it has value of what zero one and two three groups are there right so this is done by the primary synchronization signal pss that's the first step the second step is means uh, here it is possible to do the symbol timing with the pss right it cannot do the frame uh, uh, timing why pss cannot do frame timing why only the secondary synchronization signal can do that because uh, <coughs> see the primary synchronization signals are transmitted uh, two times in one frame okay see one frame has uh, 10 subframes right one frame has 10 subframes it means uh, each subframe has uh, two slots right so we are having totally 20 slots in that 20 slot slot 0 in the slot 0 the last OFDM symbol that is uh, if it is a normal CP we will be having seven OFDM symbol right in that the seventh OFDM symbol will be the PSS signal then uh, the sixth OFDM symbol is the secondary synchronization signal in slot 0 again the same PSS will be transmitted in the slot 11 that is uh, uh, in the slot 11 means 0 to 10 it is okay in the 10th slot uh, means it, it will be a slot number 11 right in that again the OFDM symbol 7 uh, will be transmitted as a PSS signal I hope you are understanding what I am talking right so the, that will be same and what type of sequence is used for transmitting the primary synchronization signal? I said uh, we will be using the Z of 2 sequence. So why Z of 2 sequence is preferred is because they have zero uh, cross correlation. Right. With that uh, means they will be having very good uh, uh, orthogonal property. Okay. Because of that uh, Z of 2 sequences are used for PSS. So with that means we transmit two PSS signal in every frame and which is uh, same also and we cannot uh, distinguish because of that it is not possible to uh, detect the frame it is possible only to detect the symbol time. So I hope that is clear because the next step is I said detection of the framing <coughs> frame timing and the cell ID group index NID of 1. So what is the value of NID of 1? This is a physical cell layer ID, right? The group index and its value is from 0 to 167. It means there are totally 168 cell ID group indexes are there. 168, right? With that, uh, there are three uh, values of NID of 2, no? means three different sub ID groups. So 168 into 3, we will get 504 unique cell ID. This one, physical cell ID. Okay, that is the second step. And here, in the uh, means uh, this detection of frame timing is done by the secondary synchronization signal. So as I said, the secondary synchronization signal will be transmitted in the uh, two times also in the, in the normal CB uh, type that is in the sixth OFDM symbol of slot zero and the sixth OFDM symbol of slot uh, eleven. Okay, means. Uh, after the uh, see wavedm symbol 7 in slot 0 is for pss and for wavedm symbol 6 is for ss similarly in slot uh, 10 symbol wavedm symbol 7 is for pss and wavedm symbol 6 for ss and that is secondary signal signal and it is different for uh, type uh, structure that is frame structure type 2 right uh, that i already discussed in what way it is different Right. So after doing this means uh, PSS and SS, so that is primary synchronization signal and uh, secondary synchronization signal, with that it will be able to uh, detect the symbol timing and the frame timing. Then 
uh, the next step is is the detection of uh, other system information from the uh, PBCS channel that is a physical broadcast channel okay so this is the step involved in the cell search process so what i said i like to repeat this first in the first step it will do the detection of symbol timing okay and as well as the cell id index that is done by using the primary synchronization signal i said then the secondary synchronization signal will be doing the frame timing and as well as cell id group index nidf1 right so, uh, then uh, other system information will be detected and transmitted from the pbch so these are the three steps involved in the cell search process and as i said in pss that is uh, the zf2 sequence is used for generating the primary synchronization signal and what type of uh, sequence used for generating the secondary synchronization signal do you have any idea anybody can say yes anyone can respond what type of sequence is used for generating the secondary uh, synchronization signal yes sir is it possible to say any one what type of sequence is used for generating the <coughs> secondary synchronization signal yes any no idea i think this is a very very important uh, step and process to understand about uh, the minimum understanding about this uh, lt see secondary synchronization signal uses the 31 bit m sequence right 31 bit two m sequences they are cyclically shifted right that will be used for detecting the frame timing and how it is different from that of because uh, it uses uh, two 31 uh, bit m sequences they are with cyclic shift uh, as say for example uh, after i think the next slide if i use the form of set d1 comma d2 i will not be able to use uh, again the form d2 comma d1 so with that uh, i can say uh, this has the ability to do the detection of the frame time okay so is it clear about these three steps the cell search process as i said as soon as you switch on your mobile phone your mobile phone acquires as to acquire the timing and frequency synchronization okay with the cell with which it is attached that is done by using this cell search process so how does it acquires uh, uh, timing and frequency synchronization by the detection of symbol timing and by the detection of frame timing right so symbol detection is done by using uh, symbol detection and as well as uh, the cell id index is uh, done by using uh, primary synchronization signal then detection of frame timing and the cell id group index is done by using the secondary synchronization signal then it will detect for the other system information from the physical broadcast channel okay. so this is what uh, i have written here again see the primary synchronization signal carries information about this a physical layer id uh, within that cell id group an id of 2 so which has uh, three values 0 1 2 right and the secondary synchronization signal carries the physical layer cell id group index so which varies from 0 to 167 that is there are totally 168 and this is how we collected the physical layer cell id okay so physical layer cell id is equal to 3 times the physical layer cell id group index plus nid of 2 is the what is the physical layer cell id within the cell id group okay so within this 168 there are three sub groups what i mean to say so that 168 into 3 will give you 504 unique physical layer cell ids okay <coughs> yeah i think this is what i already explained about this what i said the user equipment will be detecting the symbol timing 
and the celery index from the primary synchronization signal i said right and uh, as i said uh, these uh, nid of two as what value zero one two right so i said three orthogonal sequences are defined for the primary synchronization signal right the celery index nid of two that can be detected by identifying the received sequence means in the receiver uh, the match filter receiver will be there right so it will match with the received signal and with this uh, primary synchronization signal okay so the time and frequency synchronization between the user equipment and the enb will be achieved and the cell id is also obtained based on this primary synchronization signal right so i think this point also i said what i said wavedm symbol timing will be detected as uh, but uh, as there are two primary synchronization signals transmitted in each frame as i said they are same means cannot be indistinguishable hence uh, the frame timing cannot be detected by using primary synchronization signal then uh, this is about the use of secondary synchronization signal right as i said the user equipment will be detecting the cell id group index nid of 1 and uh, the frame timing from the secondary synchronization signal right as i said this uh, index cell id index nid of 1 will be detected by identifying the shift in the m sequence okay in the received signal and for detecting the frame timing right the pair of secondary synchronization signals in the radio frame uh, has a different structure than the primary synchronization signal as i mean to say is means if the sequence pair of the secondary synchronization signal is d1 comma d2 means which are of for 231 bits right is defined then i cannot use uh, this uh, as a d2 comma d1 yeah, because of this property uh, it will be resolving that 5 millisecond timing ambiguity in the first step of uh, doing the uh, symbol time detecting the same symbol time okay so i think timing advance this is a 5 millisecond timing ambiguity uh, i will discuss further okay fine right. so the first step is over second step is over so third step is what uh, detection of other system information uh, from the physical broadcast channel right so the user equipment can detect the broadcast channel to obtain other physical air information like system bandwidth number of transmitter antennas then system frame number and so on so as i said in the system information we divide that into two different types one is a master information block and another one is system information block see the master information block is transmitted on the uh, pbch okay this carries uh, this thing system bandwidth and other things and system information block is transmitted on the physical downlink shared channel Okay, because uh, as I said, uh, the system information is very large. That will be divided into two sub blocks. One is master information block, and second one is system information block. Okay, MIB is transmitted on PBCH, and SIB is transmitted on the PDSCH. So, any thing to be asked, we can ask. This is about the cell search procedure. I mean to say, yes. Sir. Anything you want to ask? No. Is could you follow what I'm saying? Hello. Hello. I am in network or what of network? What else of people? Do? If you don't respond, then. People are there. I am there with you people, or you are there with me. I don't understand because people are not responding. Hello. Yes, sir. Hmm. Not sure. Yeah. So, could you understand the what is the cell-cell procedure? Are you there or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you could understand what is the cell search procedure. <coughs> yes, 
yes you have understood or not understood or to some extent should say some extent sir uh, to some because if you, if you have some knowledge about the primary synchronization signal and the secondary synchronization signal as i said uh, it has three steps one first step is to detect the uh, symbol timing okay and as well as the cell id group index that is done by using the primary synchronization signal okay and the second step is uh yeah identification of the frame timing and as well as another cell id group index that is uh, done by using the secondary synchronization signal and third step is the detection of other system information from the physical broadcast channel pbch so these are the three steps involved in the cell search process i said why cell search process is required i said cell search process is required because uh, the as soon as we switch on our uh, mobile it will acquire the it has to acquire the time and frequency synchronization and as well as the cell identity with which it is attached so that is done by using this cell search procedure okay during this cell search procedure i said the user equipment will identify all these things what is that symbol and time framing frequency cell identification transmission bandwidth antenna configuration and cyclic prefix length okay so yes these steps i said what is step will be carrying okay i think i told about this <laughs> so so i was talking about this uh, uh, system information as i said uh, two types of the system information is divided into two types one is a master information block that will be transmitted on pbch and uh, another one is system information block which will be transmitted on the pdch okay. and this is what uh, the cell sets procedure so i said to maintain this uplink intracell orthogality okay so uplink transmission from different user equipments uh, will arrive at the enb uh, within the cycle prefix okay. uh, at the enb in one cell there will be multiple user equipments set right? so they will be arriving at the enb within the cycle prefix then i can say there will be no intracell uh, configuration miss uh, interference because uh, whatever the uh, sequence uh, each user equipment produce they are orthogonal to each other okay uh, how do we achieve that is uh, we achieve that by using the timing advance procedure so what is this timing advance procedure so, let us see how it can be obtained and all so there is a uh, timing advance is obtained from the uplink received uh, timing and sent by the enb to the user equipment so i repeat once again is a timing advance is obtained from the uplink received timing and sent by the enb to the user equipment means there will be exchange of information from user equipment to the enb okay means uh, Two and four, that we call as round trip uh, propagation delay. Okay, you might be you miss uh, understood in different way in different uh, this one, acknowledgement, negative acknowledgement, right? So that will be miss transmission from transmitter to the receiver again uh, from receiver to the transmitter. So here user equipment and ENB both are transceivers only. So that propagation round trip propagation delay. Okay. that the timing advance if you do you will be able to achieve this so the user equipment will advances or delays its timing of the transmissions to compensate for the propagation delay so with that it is possible to do the time align transmission with other user equipments okay as i said because uh, multiple user equipments will be eating the enb okay and each user equipment will be using different uh, uh Uh, sequence so that they are orthogonal to each other 
and there will be no interference among uh, those sequences which will be received at the ENB simultaneously. So the ENB will be able to differentiate <coughs> each user uh, sequence because they are orthogonal to each other. Right? So the timing advance command is on the for need basis with the granularity in the step size of this much 0.52 microseconds. So just I have shown with the diagram. Okay. So this is how timing uh, advance is achieved. The user equipment, the ENB. So user equipment will be sending the data. Okay, applying data through RACH random access channel. So the ENB will also be sending back the timing advance information. It will learn from this data and it sends that. It means the ENB only will be able to do that timing advance adjustment and not the user equipment. So it keeps uh, uh, configuring that or adjusting the uh, timing advance uh, by the ENB. So I said that will be how much. 0.52 microseconds. So this is all about the uh, cell search procedure. So let me discuss next about the random access procedure. Okay. Mm. okay. So in case of a random access procedure, means random access procedure is the first, what I can say, uh, uh, means the user equipment will be sending requesting for resources from ENB through this RACH, right? So that is what. See here we say there are two different types of uh, random access. One is a non-synchronized random access and another one is synchronized random access. So what is this uh, non-synchronized random access is? Means when do we use this? Okay, this non-synchronized random access is used when the user equipment uplink, okay, has not been time synchronized or when the user equipment uplink loses the synchronization. So during that time we say, means we are using this non-synchronized random access. So what is its purpose? The main purpose of this non-synchronized random access is to obtain the synchronization of the uplink. See, after cell search procedure, only the downlink is synchronized, not the uplink. Okay, to make a uplink synchronization, we have to go for this random access procedure. I hope you understand whoever is listening. Okay, so I said uh, the non synchronized random access is used when the user equipment uplink has not been time synchronized or when the user equipment uplink loses the synchronization. Right. So the main purpose of this non-synchronized random access is what? To obtain the synchronization of the uplink. And it will also notify the ENB that the user equipment has data to transmit. Or transmits a small amount of control information and data packets. Okay. And uh, the synchronized random access is used when the uplink synchronization is present. Okay. And its main purpose is to request resources for the uplink data transmission from the ENB scheduler. Okay. When uh, uplink synchronization is there, during that time we use this random access. For what purpose? To request the resources for uplink data transmission from the ENB scheduler. Okay. I think uh, this point I already told. As I said, after cell search procedure, the user equipment uh, will be means uh, user equipment has uh, uh, downlink synchronization only, right? So it has not yet uh, synchronized with the uplink. So to do that uplink timing, right? Uh, why there? Why it is not uplink synchronized because of this uh, round trip uh, propagation delay, right? Uh, which is I said around five milliseconds, right? Because uh, it takes time for processing of a packet from user equipment to the ENB, then ENB to the user equipment. So the total time will be of around 5 milliseconds. Right? So the non-synchronized access allows the ENB to estimate the user equipment transmission timing uh, within the fraction of the cyclic prefix and informs the user equipment about the timing correction. That is what, uh, what I have shown in the timing advance operation. Right? 
from ENB to the user equipment. So ENB only will calculate the uh, or it will estimate the user equipment timing at once. Okay. And it will only do the correction also. So as with the uplink synchronization, the user equipment will uh, request resources for uplink transmission. Right? Uh, now the E node B can uh, schedule the data transmission in the resource uh, blocks reserved for the random access channel preamble transmission. Means once it is synchronized with the uh, link, then the ENB can decide about the transmission of data right in the resource block reserved for random access channel preamble transmission. Right? Okay. Uh, so, as I used to say, uh, means uh, prior to the initiation of this uh, non-synchronous random access procedure, right? so each user equipment has to obtain uh, the information from the ENB. So it has to obtain the random access channel parameters for uh, this uh, physical random access channel configuration. Okay? Means user equipment has to obtain uh, this uh, random access channel parameter from the ENB for this uh, physical random access channel configuration. And it has to obtain frequency position and the preamble format. I said for PRACS, or RACS, there are five different formats, right? That is format 0, format 1, format 2, format 3, and format 4, which I discussed in the previous week, right? Uh, for uh, determining the root sequences and as well as the cyclic shifts in the preamble sequence, okay, which are set for the cell. There is uh, M sequence, what I mean to say here. Okay. <coughs> so, this is what the non synchronized random access procedure happens in the user equipment and the in. In the first step, the user equipment will be transmitting this random access preamble to the ENB. Okay. So this ENB will respond for this random access preamble by sending the random access response message to the user equipment. Okay. Then now once the user equipment uh, understands that whatever the preamble it has sent to the ENB and ENB will be sending the response to that. Okay. So user equipment will match those two. What is transmitted? and what is received. If it is matches, then it will send the request for scheduled transmission. Okay, then the ENB will also cross verify that and it starts uh, uh, scheduling the resources. And uh, it will be sending the contention resolution message to the user equipment because there will be multiple user equipments I said in a cell. So all user, uh, all user equipments will be simultaneously transmitting that request to the ENB, right? So uh, how ENB will be able to differentiate uh, those requests from multiple user equipments uh, is because each user equipment will be using a unique uh, sequence, okay? And they are orthogonal to each other. And they have some time advance of this also. So with that, uh, the ENB will be able to uh, differentiate the multiple uh, uh, user equipment's uh, request simultaneously. So this is what happens in the non-signal random access procedure. Okay, so this I told in words here. So what I said, uh, the multiple user equipments will be transmitting the randomly selected random access code to the ENB. So what ENB will do? It conducts multi-user detection process and allocates the resources to the detected user equipments. Right? So each user equipment will transmit the detailed information using the allocated resources. Right? So in the fourth step, what happens? The ENB will transmit the contention resolution message on the downlink shared channel. Because uh, as I said, there are chances of, uh, means if uh, multiple users uh, uses the same resource, same frequency, same time, and if ENB is not able to identify, uh, differentiate, right, then there is a chance of uh, uh, interference, right? So that we say contention resolution. That ENB will do 
because of it is having that uh, ability to differentiate different uh, multiple different user equipments with different sequence right so after successfully completing all these four steps means uh, user equipment will transmit a random access code to the enb enb will be transmitting the response to that then it will do the uh, transmission then contains the resolution now the enb and the user equipment will initiate the data communication okay so this is the uh, preliminary steps which are required to initiate the data communication between user equipment and the uh, enb okay so some more uh, i will go in depth about each step okay uh, i want some response from your side also otherwise not coming here there people are there but not responding <coughs> yes, let me ask few questions lohit yes sir ye artha idu artha idu enadru helidu naan sir sir sulpa gotta idu sulpa gotta idu ಏನ್ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತು ಹೇಳ ಎಷ್ಟು ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಹೇಳಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಚಾಟ್ ಬಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರು ಹಾಕಿಲ್ಲ ಐನ ಮೆಸ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಫೈನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪುಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ what about others any anyone can answer nishita anyone i need not name you people on your own interest if you are live with me then you should be able to say yes so this is what i understood see the motivation for me is your response if you don't respond if you don't say hi then what motivation for a teacher otherwise it will be only one way i keep uh, uh, saying many things about uh, the technology or concepts when you don't hear understand and don't question it then it will not have any yes shivangi jain is there shivangi jain shivangi hello shivangi she started i mean yeah you can talk now why only message chatting can't talk showing me okay i will also but i am not it is not audible for me no your voice is not audible not at all i am hearing hello mm, okay let me ask some questions to tell me your understanding okay uh, we have to go scroll okay yes okay so people already started leaving okay fine uh, <coughs> i yes uh, other people can join mm. i think other than raga or manjunath people should respond neha what about neha neha is not at all asking any questions Nishit Raddi has joined, I don't know. Hmm? Nishit Raddi. Nishit Raddi. Hmm. 
Yes, others can respond. No? Nobody can is responding. You know? Why? What is happened? Hello? Yes, Vivek. Vivek. Mm. Oh. So no one wants to respond. No one wants to share your understanding what you understood so far. Then let me end for today's session, I think. If I don't get response, there is no point what I feel in uh, talking too much. Only one side. If you say something, then I can also get interest. Hmm? Hello? Yes, hello. Yes. So before you leave, you enter your lesson. Okay, somebody is entering. Okay, I think to the network issue is there.
not sure the world is not. Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Mm, Rakam. Yeah, some network problem I had, I think. Uh, it yes, was uh, in between out. Eh? Mm, again, I could resign, but already people have left. Fine. Uh, no issue. So whatever I discussed today, I will be sharing that information to you all. So let me start tomorrow. I think module five. I think uh, that is why I could take uh, in module four last few topics. That is cell search and uh, uh, this random access procedure. And one more topic is that, that is power control. So that is also important. But uh, other things, CQI feedback, no? So that is a little bit depth. So I will come back after mod module five time permits. Okay. I think I let me cover first uh, one for examination. Okay. So, okay, then uh, let me stop for today's session. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, sir. Yes, class. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, man. So.